Welcome to the Zebra Influencer Series. In this episode, we feature one of Zebra's innovative technology partners, Staylinked. They are a leading voice in emerging technology and technology adoption strategy. I'm Patricia Fripp, and in my role as your host, I will ask the technology questions you want the answers to. You're in the right place if you're interested in operating more effectively with emerging technology from Zebra and Staylinked. You will be hearing from three of the brightest minds in emerging mobile technology. In their own way, they all play an important role to improve the business of Zebra customers. Like you, I'm curious to know what they know. Our first guest is Mark Wheeler, Zebra's Director of Supply Chain Solutions. For 30 years, he's helped customers operate more effectively. Mark, you are responsible for Zebra strategy in warehouse and manufactured and considered a thought leader in supply chain execution. That makes you the perfect person to update us on the trends in mobile technology in warehouse and material handling. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Patricia. And it's a pleasure to be here with you and with Staylinked. And first, some context, and, and that is rapid change. So at a global or distribution network level, we're seeing new business patterns. We're seeing changes in demand in terms of the mix of SKUs, different demand patterns. We see this continuing escalation in terms of customers' expectations of service and of visibility to their inbound orders. And when you move down to a warehouse level, what we see are warehouses responding to these network changes You know, with new facilities that very often are closer to the point of demand, new or altered operating concepts that they're implementing. And many of them are continuing to deal with challenges in attracting and retaining labor, uh, even as we begin to recover. So um, along with that, we see a lot of new technologies. And these technologies are creating opportunities for warehouse operators to, to operate more effectively. First and foremost, uh, the continued growth of intuitive and easy to use user interfaces. And this is enabled both by hardware and by software, and Staylink is, is really key to enabling uh, this whole market. Uh, we also see expanding options to integrate wearable technologies into many workflows, including wearable displays, computers, scanners, printers, and, and voice accessories. And we know that effective use of wearable technology is critical because it helps with productivity, it helps with accuracy, and it actually reduces worker effort and improves uh, uh, worker safety by reducing that stress when we you know, tightly integrate the technology into the physical flow of work. And tied to that, we see a lot of innovation around physical automation. So new alternatives that are flexible, that are low risk uh, for physical automation, that really allow companies of all sizes to sort of design out that non-value added uh, material transportation out of the workflow. Uh, and this allows the humans to focus their time and their effort uh, on actually handling materials and picking and replenishing. It's something that humans do very, very well. So these AMRs are autonomous mobile robots. They come in various shapes, sizes, uh, payloads, but they all can be operated safely around humans. And they can be implemented without you know, necessarily uh, changing the, the facility layout. We also see sensor-based technologies like active and passive RFID, BLE, and other technologies that can track the location and increasingly the condition of assets and materials uh, throughout the warehouse. So all of this adds up to challenges, both in meeting uh, these customer expectations, but also deploying effectively all these new technologies in the right way. But we know that warehouses that do that, they're gonna operate more effectively, uh, more broadly, they're gonna support their company's supply chain strategy and contribute to their company's success. So back to you, Patricia. Thank you, Mark. Our second guest is the Chief Technology Officer of Staylinked, Justin Griffith. Justin is responsible for driving Staylinked's overall product roadmap and strategy. He's a major contributor to Staylinked's recent global expansion. His specialty is how technologies get adopted into the way business is being done. Justin, tell us the very exciting Staylink story. 
Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, StayLinked is a software company that has been in business for about 30 years. And for the last 20 of those years, we've specialized in a technology called terminal emulation. And for those who aren't familiar, terminal emulation speaks a very ancient language by computing standards called Telnet, which is short for teletype network. It was one of the original computing protocols. And uh, if you want any hint as to how entrenched this technology is, uh, it was developed the same year we put a man on the moon, but it still represents about two thirds of the use case for all the rugged mobile devices with a scanner built into them. Given how legacy this technology is, it comes with a number of concerns for people trying to use it in a modern environment. Because really anything technology-wise north of a terminal plugged into a wall to a major computing system like a WMS or something, Telnet doesn't fundamentally understand. So even battery operated computers using wireless internet, it fundamentally doesn't have any context for. So StayLinked developed uh, kind of the original platform for adapting this technology to modern environments and modern technologies. It solved the most prevalent issue for people using this technology in warehouses today. That being the connectivity issues and the management issues presented by trying to use a technology that was just not engineered for these workplaces, at least in this use case. But by doing that and building on the platform that we created, we were able to build a number of solutions uh, to solve all of the problems that are coming into the market now with all of the emerging technologies that, that Mark mentioned uh, by using the mobile data collection computer as the platform to build up on. Could you give us a couple of examples? Absolutely. Uh, concerns, for example, around modernization. Um, when Android first came into use, it was a very touchscreen heavy OS. It was engineered specifically to be touched by a human finger, where terminal applications fundamentally only understand a keyboard. Uh, that took a lot of ingenuity. To, to solve, to begin to use these applications on devices that don't have the fundamental interface for that technology. But by solving that problem the way we did and using the architecture we do, again, it gives us the architecture of the platform to add these new technologies in line with what they're using today. And that's the most important part. There's no rip and replace. They can begin to use these new technologies without having to upend their application or their whole operation or warehouses. They can just overlay with the existing environment and the existing users. Once you developed this technology, was it immediately embraced? You know, when the technology first came to market, there was no immediate audience for it because people didn't believe it was the kind of problem that could be solved. Originally, they believed that it was just the cost of doing business with this technology that it was just fundamentally a feature of the protocol. This must have sounded too good to be true. So how did you go about spreading the word? The most important thing was feet on the street, phone calls, a lot of early adoption. We had a number of early customers who were very vocal about the success and a lot of committed partners and manufacturers like Zebra who built an entire business practice around being the only partners who could go in and solve this most prevalent problem. We also saw a lot of benefit from the IT and application people for not having to face this problem either. You think about all of the people involved in an operation that would get the call when there were coverage issues or network related issues or things that wrap around the device having to stay awake and connected forever to originally solve this problem, all of that just goes away. But the application people and the infrastructure people were benefiting because they were no longer having to address it every time it came up. We took the pain associated with it away. How do you work with Zebra? Zebra and StayLink have a very integrated relationship. We develop software together specifically around going in and replacing outdated or no longer supported terminal emulation software. 
We have a joint product called Tech Term for Android, which is specifically engineered to help users of the former Scion device line migrate to the latest Android Zebra devices. When you partnered with Zebra, what segment of the market embraced you first? Definitely terminal emulation is still the most used technology where the metric is speed. So if the metric comes down to speed or the number of boxes getting through the door, for whatever its faults, uh, Telnet by modern day standards is ugly, it's old, um, but it is fast and it is accurate. So if you think about the cases where that matters most, transportation and logistics, manufacturing, those sorts of environments where it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty, there's no retail front end, there's no patients in a hospital bed that you have to give confidence to with the look. That's generally where you find us. Now, was Staylink the first company to do this? We were the first to see the potential of what creating a new platform like this could do, answering this problem in a unique way. And what action would you like our listeners to take? We want to encourage people to be brave about trying new technology, to try it, but to try it with some core principles in mind. And those core principles are, you must innovate, you must improve. That's the, the bad news is that you must push forward with new technology, but you don't have to be the most innovative about a thing, right? Uh, you have to be accountable to what the technology tells you. And as Mark mentioned, we're at a point in technology where the technology can give you a great deal of feedback back to inform your decisions. And that's the basis of trust. So get the data to back it up. But then once you have the data, be brave and let it inform the next step and the next step. So I think if we had to walk away with something, it would be to be brave and be informed and let's all go be brave together. Thank you. What an exciting story. Thank you, Justin. Our third guest is the general manager of EMEA and co-CTO, Paul Rig Reagan. His favorite title is Innovator. His focus is emerging technologies and helping bring them to market. He's dedicated to making them part of how people do business tomorrow. He's a leading voice around data and its use for change management. Paul Rig. We now know Staylink as a technology company that brings new technologies to the world. Tell us more. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, we are a technology company um, and we do bring new technology to the world. That's true. Um, our perspective here, though, is, is very important on this. We're not focused on technology for technology's sake. Uh, we're focused on the people and on the processes and on what people can do with our technology. So you said at the start, I like to be to be seen as an innovator. Um, we do innovate a lot at Staling. We bring great new ideas into reality, but that is totally pointless unless customers can pick up that innovation and use it to make their lives better and to make their uh, world a better place. What is Staling's mission? Well, the industry that we serve has been struggling to evolve uh, for quite a while now. And as Justin mentioned earlier, um, Telnet is an old technology and there are, it's a very competitive space right now. So a lot of people would like to be able to incorporate new technologies so that they could help augment their existing ones and help to become more productive and more efficient and, and more accurate. So the challenge today for them is to take these new technologies and make them work really nicely with their existing uh, Telnet technology base. Uh, it's too difficult today. There aren't many solutions out there to make it easy. So our mission is quite simple, really. It's to bring these new technologies to these industries that are crying out for them, but allow them to integrate those and incorporate those into their existing solutions in a, an accessible, low cost, low risk way. You have the reputation of using data for change management. Please explain. 
yeah, data is uh, is a very interesting one here. Change is difficult for people, for human beings, and we do resist change, and we often we often only make change when we're comfortable to do so. Um, and as we said, our industry isn't really adaptive to change because it's been expensive and it's been difficult and it's been risky up to this point. So the attitude has been, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, and change is about going from where you are today to where you want to be. And, you know, looking ahead to where you want to be tomorrow and next year and in five years time. So, and as Justin said, change and evolution, they're, they're just a given. You have to change and evolve in order to compete. So as part of change, whether it's for ourselves personally or families or, or, or teams or organizations, the feedback loop is really important. So as you make a change, understanding the impact that that change has had, whether it's good, whether it's bad, and how much of an impact uh, that has been. So data for me is the feedback loop and data is essential. First of all, to know where am I today? How do I know? How do I measure where I am today? And data is essential for that. And then if I make a change and that helps me to change, what is the, the impact that that change has had? And again, data is the only way to do that. So data is the feedback loop. It's the thing that will give us comfort and enable us to make that change a little bit more easily. So, uh, you know, one of the challenges that we have is to um, encourage this mindset, this change mindset to make people more comfortable and data really is the key. How do you simplify the seeming complexity of this technology? It can be complex, that's, that's true. The complexities here are often relating to the technology itself and to the implementation of that technology. Um, I don't really see technology as being a problem most of the time in, in the environments that we find ourselves in. The great thing about being a company full of really great technology people is that when people struggle with the technology, we can say, don't, don't worry about that. We've got that. It's going to be fine. Uh, so if you're trying to make something better, to improve something, to make something faster or reduce uh, the number of errors you're encountering, for example, then what we want to do and the way we try to make this simple is just to focus on the problem in hand. Forget about the technology, focus on the people. What are they doing? How can we measure what they're doing? And then how can we improve that and measure that improvement? So to, to make, to get that simplicity, it's really about cutting out the noise and focus on the problem at hand and, and have a really strong focus on that. And when I buy my Zebra device, which I love, how can Staylink help us migrate into the future? Okay, so this is where the power of collaboration comes in. And uh, Mark and Justin have already talked about the way that Staylink and, and Zebra have been collaborating for a very long time. Uh, so if you take a customer who buys a new Zebra device, um, decides it's a very cool device, wants to get it rolled out as quickly as possible. So where do we start with that? And how far do we go? What, what's the potential for that device? So the hardware on its own and the novelty around the hardware and the beauty of the hardware, it wears off pretty soon unless you can use some software to unlock that uh, potential. And that's what Staylink does really. What we try to do is unlock the potential of every device that we work with and every technology that we work with. Justin mentioned already around Android migration, um, those devices were fantastic devices, but you had a touch only device, which was very desirable and a legacy application, which could only be driven by using a keyboard. So the combination of the hardware and the right software was absolutely essential there to enable people to use the, the, the uh, technology. And if you look a little bit ahead to all the things that uh, Mark and Justin talked about before, if you're going to incorporate new technologies like heads up displays, like wearables, uh, robots and AMRs, sensors, beacons, conveyors, uh, drones, all of these kinds of technologies, if you want to get those in 
to your environment and get them working seamlessly together. Collaboration is really important. The device drives things, the software can communicate with all the other things that need to be part of that whole uh, solution. So really the way that we see Stalink evolving and our relationship with Zebra and with our other technology partners is that we're the glue that holds them together. We're the piece that allows all these things to communicate with the legacy technology. So we're kind of the, the, the gateway to make that happen. What conversations do you like to have with customers about technologies? So we've had, we have a lot of interesting conversations when we talk to our customers and to uh, solution providers around um, taking customers from where they are today to where they want to be. And unfortunately, a lot of those conversations are simply around migration. So moving from my old device to a new device and almost stopping there. So, th so the scope of the conversation is, is very constrained. What the kinds of migration stories that we really like and the, the engagements that we really like are the ones where we get into a conversation about where we go beyond that migration. Because as Justin said earlier, evolution and improvement is essential. If you're going to remain competitive, it's, it's absolutely essential. So we like to get into the conversations where people say, okay, and then what, what next? How do I improve my uh, efficiencies then? How do I become more productive? So if we can get into that conversation where they're asking questions from Mark about the heads up display, they're asking questions about AMRs, they're asking questions about wearables, these are the migration stories that we want to talk about because the migration to Android, for example, is step one. You're just getting onto the platform that enables this evolution. And once you make that step, you got your Zebra device, your Android platform, you got your Stalink platform. That's the thing that allows you to build and evolve and change. And help us understand how Stalink can help a business remain competitive. This is, I think, a uh, uh, hugely important thing uh, in today's world. Competition is fierce out there. And if you're standing still, if you're not changing, you're falling behind and you could very well be out of business in a few years. So the change and the evolution is essential. You've got to be always looking for ways to do more with what you've got. And I think if you look at the industry at large, some of the players there, the bigger ones, the ones with more um, cash to spend, can engage in these transformative projects, strategic, expensive projects. But the majority of the industry can't do that. They can't afford it. They can't take the risk. So it's really important that we bring our technology and our innovation to the broader market not just to the ones at the top end who can afford it. We need to bring it to the broader market and enable that, that whole industry to incorporate new technologies into their, their legacy solutions. And this is really important because I don't think anybody else is doing this right now and enabling this to happen, but it has to be um, accessible. So we need to allow all these people in the industry to start off with where they are today and then make a change, a small, low risk change, but make that change, measure it, see how it works, build up that confidence. And then when they understand that they're in control, then they make the next change and then the next one. So it's about developing this mindset, which is much more open to change than the industry traditionally has been. So that's a, a, a driver, an underlying driver for everything that we do at Stalink. All the innovations, all the technology that we bring to market, it has to be accessible and it has to allow people to change in this way. So um, if people don't have that, they will not be able to remain competitive. So it's about bringing that innovation to the industry at large and just making it practical, reasonable and accessible for all of them. Which comes to the question, how much will this technology cost me? <laughs> not much is the answer a, a small percentage of the cost of the device um, and the important thing I think about looking at the cost in this is that again if you're going to look at at the cost of buying a piece of software or buying a device 
at a point in time and just take it uh, in that restricted view, then um, it's, I think it's a little bit too constrained of a way to approach that. You have got to look at the future. You've got to look at what the technology will enable you to do and how it will let you evolve and improve and be more competitive. So um, the cost of not changing and evolving is dramatic. And when you compare the cost of, of making sure that you're on a platform that enables you to, to, to change and evolve at your pace and in a way that's, that's reasonable for you, um, it's not really about the, the cost, really. It's, it's about what happens if you don't take that step. I believe you're telling us, don't worry about the technology, that's your job. We need to have an open mind to better position our companies for future demands. Yeah, I think, you know, step one in this industry is to realize that you need to keep evolving to compete. Step two is to understand that just because you have um, an old technology like Telnet in place running your business doesn't mean you're constrained to that old way of working forever. You need to understand that you can evolve. And then step three, I think, is to find the solution, the platform that will enable you to evolve. So using Zebra and Stalinked and the collaboration that we have together is the perfect platform for that. We're constantly innovating to ensure that we can bring you that change with the hardware and the software combination. So, you know, I think when you said at the start that we're a technology company delivering technology uh, to the industry, I think what we're actually doing is delivering a roadmap to our customers, a roadmap to the future that they want to see a roadmap that's going to help them go from where they are today to where they want to be in the future, a roadmap that's going to help them evolve and thrive. Paul Rigg, what is your concluding thought? I think innovation in isolation is pointless. We need to, need to make that innovation accessible to the industry. Thank you, Paul Rigg. If you find this information exciting and relevant to your business, this is the time to connect with your Zebra reseller. Tell them we want to know about the Zebra and Staylink solution. Of course, you can contact Staylink. Please feel free to share the exciting Staylink story with your colleagues. Remember, innovation in isolation is pointless. Be brave and be informed. Let's all go be brave together and Zebra is here to help.